Hey guys, we are back. I, you know, you don't really see me doing my Mojo Talk Radio series this way, but you know what? It's the best way. In the same spot with some really cool people. In, in, and I'm at the Bent Mast in James Bay, Victoria, and it's supposed to be haunted. So, really cool stuff. So if you see anything really weird, ignore it, right? <laughs> Anyways, I'm so happy to be here with Bliss Prema. Bliss, how did I find Bliss? I found her on Facebook. So that's one of the great things about Facebook. You really get to come across some really cool people that you connect to from your heart space. I've not met her previous to today. This is the first time we're actually shoulder to shoulder, all right, in the haunted space. And <laughs> but the reason I connected to Bliss was she was speaking my language. And when I hear people talking about things in a certain way, I it means immediately glam on and she was talking that day about emergence and clarity and energy and source and I said there's somebody that I really need to connect to and I was really very thrilled when she said that she would come all the way in from Sydney and spend time and spend space with me so bliss thank you so much for joining me here on Mojo Talk Radio. Thank you. <laughs> I love her so much already. <laughs> So, let's, let's start mixing it up and taking some deep dives around this topic of clarity and emergence. And I brought you in here because I'm going through that sort of shifting of space and shifting of time myself around this topic of clarity, around the topic of emergence. And some of you in my life know that I've been having that journey right now. So, tell us, Bless, what does it mean to have clarity and in relation to our emerging um, real selves. Beautiful. So I think to begin the conversation, we need to be really clear on what it is that is that is emerging, and and make sure that we're all speaking the same language. Um, the way that we have been trained for our mental constructs to create the reality that we're living in is that everything that you need or want is outside of yourself. So we have beautiful distractions that have been created on every single level that will constantly be grabbing at you, um, trying to get you to be outside of yourself. So we've got all of our major religions, uh, we've got our root chakra, uh, security, survival, stability, so mm -hmm. our clothes, our homes, our educations, like everything has been designed mm -hmm. so that we're constantly reaching out. Yeah. And so when we talk about emergence, we want to make sure that we're speaking the same language and that what we're actually talking at the foundation of every single one of those distractions is either going to be love or fear, yeah, right? So at the basis of that, if we go even one step deeper, we dive down even deeper than that, what we're really talking about is our soul. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the source of what is, we're talking about the divinity that lies within each of us, and I truly believe that it is equally within every single being mm -hmm. here on the planet, whether it's humans, mm -hmm. animals, um, sentient beings, it's, it's all of us, we're all truly divine. Mm -hmm. So if we can all sort of agree on that premise, uh, that concept that in each of us is this this speck of the divine, that we each have the fingerprint of creator within us, then we can stop looking outside of ourselves and really truly recognize that that which we desire, that which we seek, that which we... What, at, the, at, the, at the deepest level of, of our being, when you're when you're really, really reaching out, mm -hmm. that what it is that we are looking for is that connection so to So let's, let's talk about that reaching mm -hmm. out for, because that's mm -hmm. something that I was, I've been having a little bit of um, conversation around myself, is that reaching out, that striving for, feeling into, um, 
a space of clarity. Help me be clear because I, I'm not clear on what it is I'm supposed to be up to. And I hear a lot from a lot of people. They want proof positive that either what they're doing is the thing to be doing or if they it's not the thing to be doing, please tell me what it should be. And I, I know people are not trusting themselves and that quiet voice within, so they are showing up on the doorstep of a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. And before you and I uh, went live on this call, we were talking about that. What does it really mean to um, um, to trust ourselves for the answer? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's important to, to know that along the path, there are, there are many times where it's really important to to call upon somebody who um, is walking their walk and talking their talk for guidance, um, whether it's tapping into tarot cards and, and, and connecting with your own subconscious and getting a tarot card reading or speaking to someone who inspires and enlightens you and lights you up. Um, so I think it is important that there are times that we can go outside of ourselves for a little bit of guidance, but the truest um, the truest essence of who we are always knows the truth. The truest essence of who we are always knows which direction um, to take. So for me, I've followed signs and symbols a lot in my life. Um, I follow numbers, I connect into my dreams. Um, I really watch for the, I, I really um, give permission to the people around me and in my, um, in my daily circumstances to be my teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and I pick up on the energies and the conversations and the just the little bit of hints and clues along the way that so let, let's talk about signs and symbols because I think part of the part of the issue might be that we're not really aware of our life and our surroundings and our environment and we're just blindly going out there hoping we connect to what we're supposed to connect to. Let's talk a little bit about signs. I know in my world we call it signs and wonders, connectivity, synchronicity. Tell us what that can look like for us. Okay, well, so on an average day, um, you know, I've connected with the, the, the master numbers 11, 22, and 33. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm empowering the creator energy that is within me um, because 100% my mental constructs create my reality the way that I see it. So I've been working with the numbers 11, 22, and 33. Mm -hmm. So now my world reflects those signs and symbols constantly. Like my drive here, I, I can't tell you how many times I saw those three master numbers. Mm -hmm. And every time I see something that is a, a confirmation that I am creating my reality, it empowers me, it emboldens me to continue creating a reality that I recognize that I am taking radical accountability for, mm. radical responsibility for, radical, yeah. and, and radically imaginative about the, the reality that I want to create. Okay, so let's jump into seeing that number 11. I know people talk about that a lot, and I've been playing a game with myself where, can I, how many times in a day am I going to see that number appear? And oh my God, it's everywhere. I'm almost running from it. And, um, and uh, so, what does it mean when you are synch synchronizing up to those types of signs? What are we looking for? What's happening with our within our awareness? What does it is there meaning there for us? I think the signs and symbols are really all that that there is in terms of um, okay. So if you think of it from like a Toltec wisdom type of relationship where. We've all agreed to using our mental powers to create a consistent reality that, a hologram that is consistent on a day-to-day -day basis. Every morning you wake up, and I'm, every morning I wake up, I'm like, damn, how are we so good at this? Like, to the finite detail, we've, we've recreated this reality every single day. Single day. Yep. And again, I'm not putting that responsibility outside of myself or outside of you. Mm -hmm. I'm taking full accountability for this hologram and the creation for it. Now, okay, so yeah. keep that thought. Because okay. when, I, when I tell people this, they say, well, there's just no way that they can be responsible for all that they're seeing. You mean that person walking by me? I created that person walking by me, they don't even know me because they're trying to, to rationalize this from a, from a mind that 
is in disbelief about this. And mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Like when you tell me I'm creating that tree, we're sitting in front of a beautiful window and we're looking out mm -hmm. to downtown Victoria. So how did I and you create that crane together? Because you see uh, that crane, that's, right? That's <laughs> at the most finite of my radical accountability, my radical responsibility, I am in full acceptance of my creator energy. So you're asking us to trust that it's happening, the hologram is happening. How can it not be? Like, take a look around you, right? You know. It's it's epic. Yeah. And I say, damn, it's yeah. good. And see what happens, <laughs> what shifts in you when you actually can take full responsibility as creator? Like, what actually shifts in you? How does that land in you when you take radical accountability mm -hmm. for all that is? Okay, so how does that relate to our everyday life? Because, you know, we all have things that we go out into our lives to do, jobs, responsibility of family, responsibility of ourselves and our health and our wealth and our welfare. How does that align to us trying to do better in those areas? Because it's wonderful that we are co-creating, it's wonderful that we are that we can see signs and wonders and so forth, but how can we align that for some major clarity mm -hmm. and to emerge into the place that we're going? Help yeah. us with that. Yeah. So there's this uh, concept that's been created about dimensions. So you have the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension. And um, like the Bible, in my opinion, they are beautiful analogies um, that help us and stories um, that help us come to an understanding of something that's so complex mm -hmm. that it's sometimes impossible for our, us to wrap our minds around, like the thought that, that the, the world could be a flat earth. You know, like, how do you actually wrap your head around that possibility, right? So that's a whole other conversation, but I just wanted to plant that seed just because it helps with our mental constructs, and we always come back to mental constructs because that's what creates our reality. Okay. Um, so third dimension. You have to understand that we created third dimension with such profundity that we designed it in a way that we would be completely distracted by religion, our clothes, our stability, our, our survival. Our phones. Our phones. Oh God, that was a good one. It's perfect. But so third dimension is very much run by, by fear with pockets of love. So with love, I'm allowed to love my friends, love my family, love my children. And if I'm kind of sort of lucky, I love my job. But, you know, even that's kind of rare, right? But I'm taking personal account accountability for the fact that we created their dimension to be specifically that so that we could look up towards a different energy um, analogy like fourth dimension where suddenly I'm taking more responsibility for the world around me rather than being a passive recipient of energy that's coming at me all of a sudden I'm stepping into my power more and I'm saying hey actually I, I think I, I, I recognize creator energy within me and rather than being motivated and reactionary to fear I'm actually going to be mostly or half love and half fear. So you're basically what you're talking about is taking responsibility for the events of our life and not settling back into the victim position. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like when I take radical accountability for my life experience, I actually designed my entire life and every single experience in it. And by, by enabling that thought process, I can't blame anybody else. There's no blame, there's no guilt, there's no shame, because I designed it specifically with the intent to grow and to uh, upgrade my life experience to the different levels. Mm. You know, one of the things that I think people are might be having trouble with as they listen is how do they switch this on, this creator energy within them? And we're talking mojo, guys. I hope you understand that this is all part of the same conversation. How do we apply that in our lives? Now, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Please. It's about trusting myself more that I do have the power. Even if in the moment that I might even say it, I might not be fully aware of what that encompasses and what that might mean for me. It means that at least get on the path of understanding that you have it, we all have it. There's no special dispensation for anybody else out there. We all have it. 
And it's a matter of tuning in and practicing it. Practicing it's the It's a discipline. Power. Yes. It's a discipline. Yes. Yeah. So um, just going to the, the analogy of fifth dimension. In fifth dimension, it's all love with pockets of um, forgetting. Yeah. And um, so in order to maintain that frequency, it's, it's first consenting to wanting to walk that path, to wanting to live a life of happiness and wanting to have a life filled with love because a lot of people actually are so used to the drama and, and they love their fear and that's great. That's the reality that they're creating for themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, what I've done is, is I've said yes, I've given consent to the emergence of the creator energy that I, I, I hold so precious within me and then it's a discipline. Every single thought, every single word, every single action, every single step of the way, I am determined and disciplined to be um, a portal of this energy, to be um, a container for that energy and that power, and and to not let the third dimension frequencies of of playing small or being playing, held back. Playing yeah, small. let's talk about do, playing small. Do, are too many people playing small? Is that the biggest epidemic out there right now? Oh God, 100%. 100%, right? Like, who am I to say I am creator? Like, people's minds wig, wig out when you say that. And why is that? Because we've created third dimension with such profundity that we, we, we designed ourselves to to play small on purpose because if everybody's playing small then hey isn't it more um, a ch more of a challenge to step out of that box and out of that label okay so if everyone's playing small and then someone decides you know what I'm not playing small anymore I'm stepping out into playing a bigger game of life and then everybody starts freaking out because they decided that they're going to step up their, their game plan and, and do the thing bigger you know but when someone makes a decision that they're not going to stay in that place anymore, isn't aren't they in fact giving others permission? Aren't they in fact what? Giving other people permission to play a bigger game. Oh, 100%. Then why is it that we go crazy when someone does that? Well, because there's this, this aspect of ourselves that has a fear mm -hmm. of being left behind. Okay. So if I see you becoming big and strong and powerful and fearless mm -hmm. and, and accepting how indomitable your essence is, all of a sudden it makes me fearful like, oh, what if I can't do that? Mm -hmm. Right? And then you feel that, so then I'll either say things or I'll start feeling comfortable around you or I'll do something to project onto you how uncomfortable you're making me feeling. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, the whole thing about stepping into this emergence is, is you have to be fearless. You have to release all that that holds you down, all those fears that hold you down in third, so that you can start lifting up and rising up. Okay. And if that means leaving other people behind because they're not ready yet, God bless them. They're so perfect exactly where they are yeah. and we love them for Well, that. I think that's where people run into trouble is that they don't want to leave people behind. They feel that they're going to be alone. Now, folks, that can be a reality when you make the decision to make your move. You go through, I call it what? I call it the desert period, where mm -hmm. you feel lost, you feel alone, you feel as if you've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And the biggest, I would say, pull is to turn around and run back to safety. And people do make that decision, and to your point, bless them, they're beautiful where they are. Yeah. But if you know that running, there's no option to run back, it's also making that next decision where, yes, people have sort of disappeared. Um, I will spend time in the desert, but there's some really good stuff in the desert time, isn't there? Oh God, it's beautiful. It's, it's when you actually really come to understand yourself and the essence of yourself and who you truly are yeah. um, as you release the layers um, of fear that have been holding you down. And um, one of my biggest lessons, and I think um, if I can impart anything with anyone today, is that the clarity needed for emergence um, when, whenever every single step of the way, if you can start practicing acceptance as the highest form of love, accepting the aspects of yourself that are emerging that may be um, painful, that, um, that may, you know, it's work. 
basically it's work. All of this, all of this emergence, all of this stepping up into the um, the higher aspects of yourself, it does take work, and um, some of it's not pretty. No. Um, it gets messy. It does get messy <laughs> and and beautiful, and I love mess. I think mess is gorgeous um, because it, it's real and it's authentic. Like we spoke about authenticity, and mm -hmm. I mean when you start peeling away those layers, like there's nothing more authentic than than the discoveries and the uncomfortable and the pain sometimes. So how do we begin? How do we jump into a place of discovery and start peeling back those mess to those messy places? Is there any thing that you would suggest to someone just coming to that place? Mm -hmm. Other than because some people trip into it, by the way. Yeah. Some people get shoved in. Yeah. Well, other people make a decision. I created um, <laughs> or tra I transmitted. I'm not even sure how it all came about, but I created something called the Conscious Evolver. And um, what happens is, you know, we're in our life and we're like, you know, in cup full, I call it. Mm -hmm. And everything's like totally stressful. Um, and, and then all of a sudden you move into decompression. And decompression is that, that moment where you actually like can exhale. And then we start to deconstruct. And that's where we start peeling all the layers. So um, like you were telling me your story uh, about your life and how you were having that one moment mm -hmm. where you were in your room and all of a sudden you had that moment of clarity where you were like, I have all this and you know what, it's, it's, not, it's not enough. It's, it's not, not it. What, it's yeah. not it. Mm -hmm. And so then you deconstructed, you gave away all your clothes and, mm -hmm. and that was the big shift for I you. I am missing the shoes though, but anyway. I know, that sounds <laughs> sexy. <laughs> But yeah, so um, how do you start? Um, the, the start is always the acknowledgement that you're, you're, you're ready for more, that you're, you're current, um, mm -hmm. your current presence, your current, the frequency that you're emitting, mm -hmm. the person that you are. Um, hey, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> um, that you want more mm -hmm. and that you're ready. So mm -hmm. for me, the first step is acknowledging. Mm -hmm. The second step is... Um, Sorry. Oh. It's okay. The second step is um, the request. There you go. We're back. So the first, <laughs> first thing is acknowledging that there is shift that is ready to t uh, happen. You're ready to step into your source energy. Mm -hmm. You're ready to command your divinity to shine even more. You're ready to take the big leap and, and take personal responsibility for the creator energy mm -hmm. within you. The second step mm -hmm. is to... Uh, it's all about consent. You have to make sure that consent you're, with oh yeah who? with what? yourself with self okay. with self consent with self and higher self right. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is is there's a merging happening of your human with your uh, higher power right. So of course I always go out because that's what we're taught is that. Let our, me stop you there. Yeah, it do. just sounds so. Oh, people are say all oh, that work. I just want to have fun. I just want to party. I just want to. Why can't we just do it like this right now, get it over with, and, and let's move on. Um, even though it's work and messy and desert stuff is happening, we can still be happy, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, I think with the work comes um, much, um, much more profound layers of consciousness and levels of consciousness. So, like, a year ago, um, my husband went to work in the corporate world. He came home gray. We didn't really like each other. Our children were going to school. Um, and yeah, we had pockets of happiness for sure. Um, I started, I, I, I began my descent and ascension into my creator energy, um, emerging with clarity uh, about who I truly am. And my life now is, um, my husband and I both work from home. We work three days a week. Um, we're unschooling and unlearning our children um, and ourselves in the process. We have an abundance of everything in our life. We've both lost 35 to 40 pounds. And all of this has been effortless, like effortless. And so, yeah, we were definitely happy before, but now we radiate. And... Um, our life radiates, and so, we've created this with our own willpower. You know, and I think that's what people are looking for. I think the, the whole running and striving is looking for those pockets of happiness, not understanding that 
We don't have to wait for pockets of happiness. Happiness can be the overlay over everything. Truly. And that life can flow with ease and creating what it is that we want to create. And, and I think we make it harder and more complicated than it actually has to be, don't we? 100%. But that's the way we designed it. <laughs> there right. we go with that sort of, that that, that, that profundity. Yeah, that well, that 100% of, yes. radical, yeah. <laughs> Um, and, I, you know, I think, you know, there are people that are going to be in a certain space and and they go to work Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and, you know, that, and, and their life is okay and that's okay for them. And, and and I love that and I think it's perfect and good for them. And then there's there's other people that have this, this desire, this seeking. They know that there's more out there and they want more for their lives. And I think it's important that that people um, who have gotten to certain spaces say, hey, it's actually possible and um, and you can do it and to be totally supportive of that and um, to Can you see people that. that are struggling with themselves and their lives? Can, can you see it all over them? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But to be honest, um, because of the frequency that I've been maintaining, um, now in my world, um, I attract people that are very like-minded and like energy. So my oh, that reality, makes me feel good because you showed up here. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, you got it, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my, I mean, my world, my reality that I'm creating is 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 so beautiful, um, minute to minute, day by day. It's um, yeah. So give us so something loving. we can start with right now. So after we end this talk that people can say you know what I can do that and I can do it with this okay so um, consent's really important um, as we've learned through the the time and the ages mm -hmm. um, so for me like consent is actually like the biggest thing so that it's not just your human that is saying oh I want more that it's actually like I actually give consent for this transmutation for this evolution for this emergence to occur. So that's really important. So, so giving yourself permission. Giving yourself permission. Okay. Um, and then what I did actually was I created a mantra. I um, So I just closed my eyes and I had a, a, I woke up one morning and my hands were above me like this and I opened my eyes and I was like, oh, hi, what are you? Like my hands were hovering above my head. So um, for me, this is like a power a power mantra and you can just bring it over your solar plexus mm -hmm. and um, I just create the mantra of I activate transmutate and create I activate transmutate and create and so it's I, I'm activating the divinity the creator my soul power I so I'm, I'm activating that within me mm -hmm. I transmutate all of the older versions of myself that wish and, and require and desire to transmute into a higher level, a more happy level, a more fulfilled level uh, of, of being, mm -hmm. and uh, and then create, um, and and that's the key because with all of this power that comes as you emerge and step into the um, the creator aspects of yourself, what are you going to do with it all? Well, you're going to create beauty, and that's create the beauty. only directive. Yeah, as as long as you're creating beauty, you are 100% on the path. You're 100% going to be solely guided and supported. And um, once you start creating beauty as like a directive, um, you would be surprised how this holographic experience just like comes underneath you and just blows you off with a kiss. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, truly. And guys, what Bliss is referring to here, everybody has the ability and power to do that. You are working with yourself. All right. There's nothing that you have to go get and think about. You have the ability right now. You can start spiraling up that mojo energy within you. So, Bruce, tell us how you work with people. Um, yeah, I give Indian head massages, which is basically sitting in a chair for an hour and basically getting to go to heaven. Um, it's a physical massage, but uh, it's also a very spiritual experience working on the chakras. Um, because I have maintained a frequency of energy I'm able to transmit that energy through my hands now to people sitting in my chair so that's one thing I do uh, I also do uh, the uh, conscious evolver coaching sessions 
So if there are aspects of you that um, you do feel desire um, that have been denied, repressed, regressed, suppressed, um, and you want them to come to the light so that you can fill up with more um, divine light energy, I can help you along the way. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just started an initiate program. I've got 11 initiates who are going to be um, on my energetic frequency for the next four months. And they've all jumped in with a yes and have agreed to transmutate to their next higher level of being. And I'm going to yeah. be their guide on the way. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. You know, this listening to her talk, I'm just going to read what Val George has here. She says, awesome. I'm changing my vocabulary and using words like I create, design, manifest, etc. Thank you. Val, thanks for sharing that. And I love that you brought in this piece about language. Language is so important. I, don't, I, can, I can't stress this enough. The words we use bless or curse us. Truly. All right? And we don't understand that. We just pick things up from everybody else and throw it out there. And you have no, I'm sick, I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that. Um, you are doing it to you. You are creating you. This what, what Bliss is referring to around source energy and frequency, all of it centers around the language you speak, the language you think to yourself. So thank you for bringing that to us, our mm -hmm. attention, and Val, yeah, thank you, right Val. on, Val, for sharing that with us. And for anybody else that may have a question or a really great statement for part of this question, I know it's a lot different than what I'm usually bringing, but I have to tell you, you know, even in the world of business, where a lot of us are business builders, can you imagine that? A lot of us are business builders, but I have to also mention it's part of everything. There's no compartmentalization. Where you are in one thing is where you are in everything. If your energy is solid here, it's solid everywhere. So the thing to work on is the energy and the language of creation and love. Perfect. All right. So bliss. This truly has been bliss. <laughs> Good call. You know, I'm bringing you here because I think it wasn't just for those that are tuning in, but also for myself filling up with really good energy around really powerful people. So that's part of it, guys. Go surround yourself with powerful information coming from really powerful people. So I'm going to keep coming back with some really great information because we are needing of it mm -hmm. as we ascend higher and higher in our businesses and in our personal lives. We need more of it. Bliss, thank you. thank you. I will attach Bliss's information to on the notes that I, I attach at the end of this and then I share it again. And how you can further follow her and reach her and help. Maybe she can help you spiral up too. Thanks, everybody. Have a really great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.